You want to know what the mechatronics engineering degree is really like? Maybe you're curious which courses will set you up to design robots, drones, or even self-driving cars. Or maybe you're interested in how to choose the best focus to land your dream job of developing advanced prosthetics for amputees, creating IoT devices, or leveraging AI in autonomous vehicles and robotics. Today we'll be getting into all of that and more in the Mechatronics Engineering Roadmap University Edition. Now, in case you haven't heard of it before, mechatronics engineering is the ultimate fusion of engineering disciplines, combining mechanical, electrical, and computer slash software engineering to design smarter and more efficient systems. A jack of all trades, one might say. And before we start, a quick reminder that each university does do things a little bit differently, so you might not see the exact same courses at your school, but most classes and the ideas in this video will hold true for any mechatronics engineering degree. Now, make sure you're buckled up because we've got an engineer degree to get through. I'm Engineer Joe. Welcome to Engineering Insiders. Now getting into the video, we've split up the curriculum into four different sections to make it easy. We have general education classes, the core courses for mechatronics, the specialized courses where things really get interesting, and then your final capstone project. Getting into it, let's kick things off with the basics. Sure, they're not as flashy as robotics or control systems, but they're the tools you'll need to tackle the advanced stuff down the road, so make sure to pay attention. First up, we have mathematics and physics. Starting with math, love it or hate it, math is the language of engineers. So in your first years, you'll see courses like Calculus 1 and 2 and Advanced Calculus, consisting of everything from quick limits to pages upon pages of triple integrals. Whereas Linear Algebra is a little bit more fun in my opinion, teaching about matrices of numbers and useful ways to handle data. Later, very important to determine the acceleration of robotic arms or for smooth motion profiles of conveyor belts. Differential equations, on the other hand, provides mathematical models for objects like springs that bounce back and forth until equilibrium is reached. Now, statistics consists of bell curves and Markov chains, which is where decision making and automation get their mathematical foundation. Now, lucky for you, we're already done with math and into physics. Physics provides the why behind the principles you apply in mechatronics. Take a robotic gripper, for example. Physics tells us how forces come into play to hold an object securely without squishing it. It also shows how the motor uses electromagnetism to turn electrical energy into the movement that powers the gripper. And when it comes to dynamics, physics helps us figure out how fast or slow the gripper should move to get the job done perfectly. Now, without physics, we'd be grasping at straws, but with it, you can design systems that are Precise, efficient, and downright awesome. Moving on, you'll have a number of electrical systems courses where you learn about basic circuitry, like resistors and capacitors, and how they react to different power sources. You'll take that, then continue on to controlling microcontrollers to create different types of video games and other state machines, and even get into signal processing. But we can't forget about thermodynamics, teaching you the vitals for energy management in systems like various engines and industrial robots. Now, courses like chemistry and structured properties of materials provide a deeper understanding of material properties and reactions, which is essential when working with advanced sensors or designing energy efficient systems. Now, it is really important to note that this part of the degree is actually the most challenging. Yes, the first year or two of engineering degrees see the most amount of dropouts of any year. A whopping 40% of students find themselves leaving their degree. You must mentally prepare for the very quick paced and strenuous first year, as I'm a firm believer that Anyone can become an engineer if they put their mind to it. I know it's cheesy, but it is true. Now make sure to stay around and subscribe for all of our best tips and tricks to not only get through your degree, but to absolutely crush it. Now, besides these foundational subjects, you'll take a few general education courses that play a crucial role in shaping a well-rounded engineer. I know you just wanna hear about Python and CAD, but I've worked with a lot of engineers and found that exploring other verticals of life besides engineering makes a much more interesting and fun person to be around. And at the end of the day, you will greatly benefit from those skills when applying to jobs. So enjoy your philosophy, writing, and music courses. You might even end up finding something you take with you for the rest of your life. But but enough with that. By this point, you'll be well into the coolest part of your first year, workshops and labs, where all the ideas in your head start coming to life. 
In chemistry labs, you'll get to mess around with reactions and materials, figuring out how to create stuff like ultra-strong metals for robots or flexible materials for wearable electronics. Over in physics labs, it's all about playing with forces and electricity, building simple motors, testing magnetic fields, or even launching projectiles. Yes, it is as fun as it sounds. Of course, on top of that, we have the engineering labs, where you'll finally get your hands on CAD software to sketch designs or write your first bits of code to start making things move. These labs aren't just assignments, they're where you start actually feeling like a real engineer. Which gets us through the basics, but now we have bigger fish to fry. The cool part about the second batch of courses is that they're full of content that you're actually going to use in the daily life of your profession later down the road. Kicking it off with our core, we have one of, if not the most foundational course, which is control systems. Control systems describe the brain behind every modern machine. Have you ever wondered how cars stay at the perfect speed on cruise control or how drones just hover in place? It is all thanks to control systems. This is where you'll learn how to make machines think, react, and adapt to whatever is thrown at them. And here's the cool part. Every single mechatronics design has a control system because without it, machines would not know what to do. Whether it's a manufacturing robot assembling products with precision or a drone delivering packages or even a simple thermostat, control systems let them sense the world, make decisions and act in real time. By the end of this course, you'll be a pro at using the feedback loops and some clever math to bring machines to life. In practice, they're actually pretty simple. It's just something with sensors to take data on the environment, electronics to compute outputs given the data, and doing something, anything, based on that decision. But enough with control systems, next up we have sensors and actuators, the eyes, ears, and arms of a system, detecting changes in the environment like light, temperature, motion, and using an actuator to complete a task from those changes. For instance, in a cruise control system, speed sensors constantly monitor how fast the car is moving. Meanwhile, actuators are the muscles, translating those signals into physical action. In this example, an actuator adjusts the throttle to keep the car at a steady speed. Together, sensors and actuators are the ultimate dream team, forming the backbone of any mechatronic system and making machines smart enough to interact seamlessly with the world around them. But then we have microcontrollers and embedded systems, the brains behind every smart device. Think of a microcontroller as a tiny computer embedded inside machines to control their functions. Where we have the sensors to sense and the actuators to do, the embedded system is the brain that translates the sense into the do. Back to cruise control, the microcontroller processes signals from the speed sensor and decides how much the actuator needs to adjust the throttle to maintain a steady speed. In this course, you'll get hands-on experience programming these powerful little devices using languages like C and maybe some Python. Now, this is really important because this is how you make literally any of the applications in this video so far actually move and do so in the right way. And a quick tip to take very special notes while learning Python because it is the Swiss army knife of programming languages. It's easy to pick up, widely used in industries like robotics, automation, and AI, and it's perfect for tasks like data analysis, machine learning, and controlling microcontrollers. Heck, I use it almost every day as an electrical engineer. Plus, employers love seeing Python on a resume because it shows you can hit the ground running on real life projects. And what better way to get started with real life projects than utilizing the sponsor of today's video, JLC MC. Now, if Mechatronics excites you, you have got to know about this company. They are a fantastic resource for that killer side project you've been meaning to start. Now, I've manufactured my personal and internship PCBs with JLC PCB, their sister company. So I'm super excited to roll out JLC MC to all of you. JLCMC offers a huge range of mechanical components for your next project. Whether you need aluminum enclosures for guitar pedals, precision gears for automation, or even photoelectric sensors ready to be mounted on your next conveyor system. Heck, you can even pop over to their sister site, grab an MPU 6050 gyroscope and accelerometer, and you're already halfway there to your own self-balancing robot. For real, if you're into mechatronics, robotics, or automation, JLCMC has the parts to bring your ideas to life. A huge thank you to JLCMC for help keeping this channel up and running, and please, if you could do us a favor and click on their link, it supports us a ton and we would appreciate it. Now back to mechatronics. Coming back to the courses, we have electronics and circuits. 
Here, you'll explore both analog and digital circuits. You'll learn about components like resistors, capacitors, diodes, and transistors, and how they work together to create functional systems. Like how a diode ensures electricity flows in only one direction, or how a transistor actually uses electrons to amplify signals in devices like, well, whatever you're watching this video on. But it doesn't stop at the theory. You'll be designing and building real circuits from simple boards powering LEDs to complex ones in modern satellites or even the robots that seem to be taking over our day-to-day -day tasks. Finally, you'll get to explore the mechanical domain. Mechatronics engineers don't just work with circuits and code, they also need to understand the mechanical components that bring systems to life. Here, you'll study about the principles that govern how physical systems behave, including statics, which focuses on forces and systems at rest, and dynamics, which explores motion and the forces that cause it. You'll also delve into vibrations and resonance, which help engineers design systems that can handle or avoid unwanted oscillations. Think about a car suspension system absorbing bumps on the road. Additionally, you'll dive deeper into properties of materials to understand how different metals, polymers, and composites behave under stress. A critical skill when designing mechanical parts that need to withstand wear and tear. Many courses will incorporate computational tools like MATLAB or SOLIDWORKS for simulating and modeling mechanical systems. Now, by the end of these courses, you'll have all of these skills up your sleeves to create some seriously cool stuff that make life easier and smarter. Sounds pretty cool, right? Now, before we get into the mechatronics specific courses, we ask that if you've learned anything about mechatronics to please like and subscribe. It really helps us out and lets us know which fields you want more videos on. But now we get to start the real fun, the niche engineering courses. By your third year, you'll have a solid grasp of the core concepts and it'll be time to start narrowing your focus. Mechatronics is a broad field, so finding your niche is key to building a fulfilling career. Here are some of the most popular specializations. First, we have the robotics and automation path. If you've ever dreamed of building robots, this is a very lucrative path for you as the world is quickly transitioning towards more and more artificial intelligence and smart systems. To thrive in this area, focus on courses like robotics, kinematics, and dynamics, control systems, and machine vision, which teach you how to design, control, and enhance robotic functionality. Courses in industrial automation and programmable logic controllers will also help you build systems that work seamlessly without human intervention such as smart warehouses that handle inventory or automated agricultural robots that plant and harvest crops. This specialization sets you up for exciting careers, one of which could be autonomous robots for disaster response, capable of navigating complex environments using advanced sensors and AI algorithms. Other students will find themselves leaning toward the smart manufacturing and industry 4.0 path. Here, you'll get to cover topics like Internet of Things, cloud computing, big data, 3D printing, and digital twins. Skills that are highly in demand to advance careers in e-commerce, transportation, or customer care industries. Another popular path is to get into biomedical mechatronics. For those of you interested in healthcare or working side by side with doctors and paramedics, this field offers opportunities like designing an exoskeleton to help paralyzed patients walk again or robotic assistance for complex surgeries. Courses in this specialization cover topics like bioinstrumentation, prosthetics, and surgical robotics. And we'd like to say pat yourself on the back if you choose this path you will not only get to flex your engineering skills and design expertise, but you'll also tap into your empathetic side. Now, another super exciting path these days is autonomous vehicles and drones. Unlike traditional robots that worked in fixed environments, this field focuses on machines that can move, adapt, and make decisions on their own, using, you guessed it, AI, along with ultrasonic sensors, GPS, and smart navigating systems. These technologies handle unpredictable situations, be it self-driving cars navigating busy roads, to drones inspecting infrastructure like bridges or pipelines. On this path, you'll learn about sensors, navigation algorithms, and control systems that enable these systems to operate without human input. Careers in this field include designing of smart features like advanced driver assistance systems, components for self-driving cars, and the in-vehicle control systems that make modern cars so intelligent and efficient. All of the choices might seem intimidating, and we apologize if we missed any, but the most important thing you can do for yourself is to take the classes that interest you. It doesn't matter if it seems like they might not benefit your perceived career path, attempting to figure out what you want to do for the rest of your life really is the most important thing here. But don't stress about it too much, some don't even figure that out until decades down the line. 
All right, here we are in the final stretch. We have the capstone project, the grand finale of your mechatronics degree and your chance to bring all your skills together in one epic creation. One year long engineering project that shows off all of the amazing fields we've talked about thus far. But where do you even start? Don't worry, there are so many ways to kick off an amazing project. You could team up with local engineering companies to tackle real world problems and build some industry connections. Or maybe pick up a project from past students and put your own twist on it. Because who doesn't like making something better? One of my favorite options is to look around your local community for a problem that needs solving, like creating a device to make life easier for seniors or automating a process that's still stuck in the stone age. A final option is if you have that entrepreneurial spirit, why not just create your own product to sell? A smart home gadget or a cool robotic tool could be your first big step into the world of business behind engineering. Now, remember, the Capstone Project is more than just an assignment. It's a staple in your portfolio, your showcase, and often your ticket to landing your first job. Here is how to make the most of it. First, you want to choose a project that aligns with your interest. For example, if you're interested in robotics, consider building an autonomous robot for warehouse operations. If renewable energy excites you, design a solar power powered water purification system. Your project should not only be challenging, but also start building expertise in a specific area. A very underrated tip is to become the team software, hardware, or any type of lead, as taking a leadership role shows employers that you're not just technically skilled, but also a great collaborator that takes problems into your own hands. Lastly, you want to make sure to maximize showcasing your skills. Your capstone project is often the first thing employers will ask about in entry-level interviews. Be prepared to explain your role in the project, the challenges that you faced, and how you overcame them. Now, enough about that. I want to hear from you. Knowing all of this, do you want to be a mechatronics engineer? I hope so, because all that's left to do is to cross that stage and hold up your degree, claiming victory once and for all. But what do you do after you graduate? Check out our Show You Want to Be a Mechatronics Engineer video to see what being a mechatronics engineer is really like. Now, thanks for watching and happy engineering, everybody.